This is definitely a question that I would also like to know as well. How can I meet new people or find groups of people who have my similar interests? So are you having a hard time finding people that have similar interests? Is No, not really. I mean, I, I have my own friends, but every now and then it's really nice to also find someone who has that similar interest. Like, so have you your similar interests. You want to expand your peer group. Yeah. Because I learned this from well, Tony a lot Robbins. Of people really. The quality of your life is in direct proportion to the quality of the people who you consistently spend time with. The quality of your life is in direct proportion to the quality, or the I should say the quality of your life is in direct proportion to the expectations of your peer group. So if you're hanging out with a bunch of people and their purpose in life is just to work some minimum wage job, make enough money to buy a good bag of weed and sit around and play video games and smoke and eat pizza all day, Anytime you try to better yourself or move beyond that, you're typically going to get pulled down and attacked and made fun of because that group of people, they know they're slacking. But you leaving reminds them of how much of a, a slacker they are. So it's really important that you, like if you want to become a great tennis player or a great golfer, you want to play with people that are way better than you because you'll get better versus playing with people that are, that are worse than you. You crush every time you play them. And so it's like when we get challenged, it's typically where and how we, we grow the most. And so like attracts like. People that like the same things tend to like each other. So, you know, because I deal with people in phone sessions. you got guys that are sometimes they're living in the middle of the country. They, they've done very well for themselves. They live on a lake, and there's like 10, 10 neighbors and like 20 miles where they live, so they're kind of out in the country. And what I tell them to do is go get an apartment in a nice part of the city maybe you got to drive an hour where there's stuff happening so you can go for the weekends go drive into the town you can get on the dating apps you can go out and get involved in activities and hobbies and interests and things that you love and enjoy and you know if you love boating you join a yacht club or some kind of boat club if you're into physical fitness then obviously joining a gym and working out with other people that like to work out, you'll meet other people there and become friends with them as well. If you're into art, go to art galleries, art gallery openings, or hang out with other people, or you go to like Art Basel down in Miami. It's lose yourself. When, you're, when you have free time, go lose yourself in doing the kind of hobbies you love and enjoy, even if you have to go on your own. Yeah, I recommend going on your own because usually when you're with your friends, you don't really go out of your way to talk to other people. If you're on your own sitting there, like you kind of want to push yourself to be like, hey, like, do you want to walk with me? Do you want to go to the store with me? Get a coffee with me? And, like, it makes you want to be social and get to know other people. What about in terms of people who are shy, especially the ones who are shy at first? I highly recommend that you read and listen to Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. And that thing, I think it's over 100 years old at this point. Mm -hmm. And so at the time, Dale Carnegie went around to guys like J.P. Morgan, the Carnegies of the world, all the titans and wealthy, successful people of his day and said, hey, what's your best life advice? What's your best business advice? What's your best relationship advice? What's your best advice for meeting people and influencing people? And that's how How to Win Friends and Influence People came along because there's a lot of skills in there. And a big part of meeting new people is taking take a sincere, authentic interest in other people. Ask them personal questions. Ask them the kind of questions that you would enjoy answering. When you meet somebody that you like or that you've always wanted to meet, you're going to typically be fascinated by them. So what would you want to ask them? What kind of question would they enjoy talking about that they would get excited about? And then their excitement helps get you excited. So... Just because when somebody comes around that you don't know and they just start asking questions, where are you from, where you grew up, just basic things, after a few minutes of talking to them that way, you kind of feel like you're talking to an old friend or an old high school buddy maybe that you ran into in the grocery store or whatever, and you're just, hey, what have you been up to? And it's that kind of vibe, that kind of conversation, and that it's very disarming to people. And so if we don't know each other and we just met and you spend like 10, 15 minutes listening to somebody and asking them questions and them telling you their life story, after they've talked for 10 or 15 minutes, they feel kind of guilty. And the law of reciprocity says that, oh, well, I've, you know, you, I've been talking so much for the last 10, 15 minutes. Why don't you tell me about you? And then, then they're open to hear what you have to say. And this is, you know, because I used to be in sales and this was 
one of the first basic things that I taught my salespeople was that you're not there to sell them a product. You're there to make a friend. So get interested in your clients. Ask them where they're from, what they love to do. Ask them about their families, where they grew up, what they do for a living, what their hobbies, their interests are. And you spend 10, 15 minutes doing that, just shooting the shit. They came in to the sales appointment thinking, oh, great, i got to be on the lookout. What's this sales guy going to try to spring on me? And instead, it's like you're just kind of hanging out with a, a friend. And so when, what happens is when you talk about yourself for 10 or 15 minutes, the other person starts to, that's listening to you speak or the person speaking feels like, well, they care about me because all of us love to talk about ourselves. And it's nice when we find somebody that likes to, to listen to us. And so by meeting a total stranger and getting them to talk and because the other thing is whoever's asking questions is leading the conversation is running the conversation. And so you can lead it wherever you want it to go. So it's a great way to create rapport. Just be curious about other people. I think it's funny when you're saying that because you know that you're in sales and you know you make that relationship first and there's that point in time and you see it happen the person that you're speaking to all of a sudden lets their guard down and just opens up and it's like okay that just happened and and you know exactly when it happens you know when you when you ask them the right question or whatever and you get them talking about something they're excited about you know how can how can we do this you know how can we overcome the fear of meeting these people. And you said something earlier, Corey, it was something like um, repetition is the mother of skill, the mother of skill. Um, so repetition is the mother of skill in relationships. And sometimes we're afraid of approaching certain people. But if we practice on people that are less threatening, and you know, not only are we making other people happy by engaging in conversation with them, but we're improving those skills. We're learning how to, you know, talk to people without fear. And we realize, wow, this is a lot easier than, than, you know, I, I, I first had this fear and now I realize this is easy to do. So practicing, practicing, practicing. And, you know, my favorite example is the elevator example, because a lot of people will get in an elevator and they'll push the button and they'll turn and they'll face the door and they're silent for however many floors there are there. Why? You know, is it so threatening to just say hello to somebody or maybe take it next step and, you know, comment about, you know, something they're wearing or, oh, you must be a Braves fan. You know, you know, I, I use, I'm from Atlanta. You know, that's a neat jacket. You know, or there's something that you can engage in conversation and people love to talk about themselves. So it's practice, practice, practice. Yeah, my favorite kind of people to talk to are shy people. People that are less like, because I'm already an introverted, shy person. So when I see someone who's extroverted and very like open and expressive, it kind of makes me fall back because I'm like, oh, I can't really meet that energy. But someone who's like even more shy than me, more quiet, I'm like, I'm going to take them out of their shells. Like I'm a shy person, but like I'm going to bring them out. And it makes me feel like the extrovert when I'm really not. So those are like my targets. I'm like, that's my guy right there. That's pretty cool, though, because you're recognizing that it's uncomfortable to do, but there's a reward, and mm -hmm. it's fun, and it's exciting, yeah. overcoming that fear. And you can tell it makes them happy, too. They're like, yeah. they start coming out, and you're like, ooh. Like, it kind of reminds me of myself when other people make me come out, so I love mm -hmm. that. Yeah, it makes you feel, or it makes them feel like you care. Because mm -hmm. if you're taking time to listen to them, because, I mean, how, how often do you meet somebody that actually wants to know what's going on in your life and actually gives mm -hmm. a shit? Mm -hmm. hopefully you actually do care when you ask them right hopefully you really do care <laughs> uh, but that's part of the practice too yeah speaking of like it tracks like i mean his brother sean one of my best friends for 40 well, over 40 years now i guess it's like we met in high school i mean i think we were we we had a class together one year and we were just at a party and i think i ran it ran into him at, at the keg you know because <laughs> he was usually near it <laughs> and i was usually near it too so he just ended up hanging out and his brother is always smiling always laughing always telling stories always cracking jokes always wanting to have a good time never saw him angry never saw him pissed off never i never i don't remember him getting in any fights or anything even though there'd be fights going around at on um, you know when at the parties that we had in high school but he was always like let's have another beer let's get you know, let's 
Let's yeah, get, no, the Haley's are lovers, drinking, not fighters. Drinking to get stinking drunk, is he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're lovers. We'll fight if we have to, you know, but that's usually to help out a friend. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just in the act of hanging out and doing fun things. Back then it was, you know, hang, pouring yourself some beer from the keg, being, eight, you know, 17, 18 years old and parents aren't around, having a good time. And he does have some stories, and I can, you know, mention some of them here, but I might embarrass you because you were probably in them, so. <laughs> we'll have him on. One. Well, he, well, we we have um, film with, with your brother, but he gets very self-conscious because he's always worried about what his wife's going to think. Well, and here's one, for instance. I remember him, uh, I think it was a graduation uh uh, drive through thing, maybe. Uh, maybe it was a fast food drive through Does that ring a bell? Were you there? Well, one of our classmates worked at the McDonald's. And so we used to go go by there, and he would snag us free fries or Cokes or Big Mac attacks or whatever. I'm I'm thinking it may have been something along the lines of a clothing optional drive through in a convertible. Yeah, that, I wouldn't have been... <laughs> <laughs> on that, but there is somebody I don't want to say his name on camera that was famous for for that, like especially when we were in our twenties, over at this place in Fort Lauderdale it was called River, River Rock Cafe. Jennifer remembers because you know she used to be back there in the day, and this dude like he would get really hammered, and he was people start daring him and cheering him on, buying him shots. He'd start fucking taking his clothes off in the fucking bar because he was so hammered <laughs> and walking around the bar fucking naked. You know everybody laughed at him. He didn't give a shit. You know, he's a family man now. It's kind of funny to to see him on Facebook, but, it, you know, he raised some hell. He didn't give a shit. Okay, so you got out of that one. That wasn't you. I wasn't there. <laughs> I was not doing any streaking in high school. 